The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Adam, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay. And has that changed anything yet? No, it just says connected to GoToWebinar. Your session should begin shortly. You can close this window now, but I don't even really know what. Okay. Hang on just a second. Let me... And Adam, can you hear me now? Can you still hear me? I can hear you great. I just, yeah. Let me just ask you. So we just got uh, just a few seconds ago. One second. Okay, I see. All right. I see. Okay. I see no to grow. No is to grow. I see that. Oh, so you. Something just changed. So I see. Can you keep going forward to see if I can see the presentation? Sure. Just one second. So for those of you that are on uh, hold here or on mute, just uh, give us a few seconds. We're just going to get this all set up. And let me know if you can see this, Adam. Here we go. Do you see my screen? Adam? Right, do I have to enter any information into this main screen or no? You shouldn't. Like, mm -mm. Okay. You might just want to exit out and maybe go again and see if that, because I've got the presentation in presentation mode, so you should see the whole uh, presentation up. If not, we'll... I'm going to do something. I'm going to try something. I'm going to try to change presenter to you. Let's see if I can if I can pull you up. So you're not showing as a presenter yet, as an attendee. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Okay. There so. you are. Yes. Okay. I'm going to – so you can see the screen. Okay. How we do – you got it? Well, you're yep. not going to – okay. Awesome. We are good okay, to – Okay, there go. we go. I don't know what all that was about, but uh, I think we're I think we're good. Um, what can you see? Do I have? Is it on my screen right now, or what can you see? So I have control of the screen, and everyone that's um, on the call right now, we have about four attendees on the call right now, and they're in listen-only mode. They can hear us, and because I started the session, so uh, for those of you that are listening in, we are going to get started here at the top of the hour. Um, Adam and I are just working through a few. Uh, 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 technical uh, issues here with the uh, go-to meeting. But what's going to happen, um, if you can see this, Adam, so I'll, I, uh, what I'm going to be doing is moving the screen. And when I move the screen, um, uh, I'm going to actually pass it over, pass the uh, controls over to you so that you okay. can um, move the screen during your discussion pieces. Okay. Let me get back to that. So did the screen move for you just now? It did. Okay. Yes. All right, we're good. We're okay. So let's just try this real quick. Let me do this. I'm going to change presenter over to, do you have the PowerPoint up at your desk too? I do not. Okay. Well, then I'm going to move the screen for you. Okay. Do I need to have it up? Nope. I'm going to move we're, it for us. Okay. We're good. As long as you can see it, I'll move it along. You can just tell me if I need to move faster or slower. <laughs> okay. While, while we're presenting, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And um, I see we have a few more participants on, uh, coming on and joining us. And um, so we will be getting started in about a minute here at the top of the hour. There we go. We're getting some additional people, Adam. So you guys are having a uh, – are you in Tennessee, Adam? Yeah, we're in Nashville. What a nice place to be. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's a great place to live and be and visit. Well, I'm talking to you from Melbourne, Florida, which is also a nice place to be. It is. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. So I'm showing uh, 2 o'clock, so if you're uh, ready, Adam, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Okay. 
So um, I want to welcome everybody to um, this the webinar today. Of course, we're going to be talking about uh, our topic is to know is to grow, and we're going to be talking about uh, data-driven um, decisions for post-acute uh, sales growth. And uh, we have our guest speaker today from Playmaker, um, Adam Bishop. And so we're going to just delve right in. So um, I'm Shelley Womble, and I'm the sales champion here at CoreCubed. And uh, for those of you that don't know me or aren't familiar with me, I've got uh, 25 years of operational and sales experience directly in the home care field. And I come from a multi-state home care background, and I've worked in a, uh, all home care settings. And most recently, uh, seven of the last 10 years I've served as the national sales director for, for a large national provider. And so I'm really excited to be on the Cork Cube team and to be um, uh, talking to you guys today and uh, hearing what uh, great things that we're going to hear from Adam uh, from Playmaker. So um, our guest Playmaker, um, Adam Bishop, is um, he is uh, the president and founder of Playmaker. And Adam, over the past few decades, he's served uh, he's served thousands of people and home care agencies to achieve their extraordinary profitability and growth. And um, he began Playmaker in 2008 as a founder. And uh, Adam, I'm going to uh, turn it over to you and let you talk a little bit about uh, your background and your terrific platform there at um, Playmaker. And I'm going to forward the slides for you. So just let me know if, you, if I need to move faster or slower for you. Great. Um, thank you so much, Shelly, and thank you, Core Cubed, and uh, thank all of you for taking some time out of your busy day to listen to what we are going to present with regards to uh, growing with technology. Very excited about the presentation and giving you a couple of nuggets that you can take out uh, from today's presentation and start implementing those uh, immediately. Uh, I was going to save some time at the end to go over kind of Playmaker, some of the opportunities there, and wanted to kind of dive right in. And so with that, um, kind of want to start off with this first slide to really highlight the challenge that we've identified that all of you, whether you're a private duty, home care, hospice, home health, that are facing in today's very competitive and challenging marketplace. If you look at, you know, home care growth over the last five years, is almost just under 50%. Uh, growth of, of new startups in the space, which is tremendous growth. If we think of, you know, home health and the, the reimbursement cuts that have happened since 2009, there's been just under 50% of reimbursement cuts there and looking at some additional cuts that are happening. And then, you know, if we look at some of the other, you know, opportunities that exist with regards to value-based purchasing and some of the clinical outcome measures that give us an opportunity to, to increase our overall revenue reimbursement, there's really something there for, for everyone for an opportunity. I mean, obviously with challenges, it presents opportunities for your agency, um, large and or small. And so I think if we think of these particular stats that you're seeing on your screen, whether they're a cut or whether they're opportunities to increase reimbursement, is how do we really effectively leverage those, those challenges and opportunities through data and, and knowing your data better? And so the opportunity really here is how do we, how do we take these these statistics and really leverage them within your day-to-day -day business. I'm gonna start off by kind of sharing with you an analogy that probably some of you have already heard, but I think it's so important in our ever-growing and, and ever-challenging marketplace. And it's in Africa, every morning a gazelle wakes up and it realizes that you know it must run faster than the fastest lion. lion a lion wakes up and realizes that it must run faster than the slowest gazelle. And or it'll starve to death. And so with that being said, it's very parallel to our market in the industry that we're all in. It's if we're not growing, then we're not surviving. And so today really what I want you to get out of is how do we take the data that exists or could exist in your agency and leverage that for growth and for opportunities? So next next slide, okay, perfect. So, sorry, can you go back one? Yep. So are you focused on the right referral, for, referral sources? Having worked with hundreds and thousands of, of sales reps and, and VPs of sales and business development folks across the country, I can tell you that when we work with, with sales reps, 
a lot of times they're not calling on the right referral sources. And what I mean by that is they're calling on, you know, low, low value or low volume physician and facility targets. And the not looking at the, whether there's a large practice size, the, the mix of the practice, is it high Medicare, is it high commercial, really understanding that. We're going to get into more of this as the presentation moves on. But really understanding the value of those, the value and the volume of those referrals. If it's a low volume home care or home health referral practice, but it's a large practice, what are the opportunities there to educate that practice on the benefits of home care, home health, or hospice services? Identifying specialty practices. All of you have identified the opportunity to specialize your organization, your agency, and differentiate against your competition. Are you communicating your specialty programs to that referral source? Does that referral source have a concentration of patient mix relative to a certain specialty that would crosswalk back into your, your agency? So those are some of the things, and we're going to get into more of these, but are you focused on the right referral sources to ultimately grow your business? Secondly, are you communicating the right message to your to your target accounts? So, like I talked about with disease programs, are you is your sales team co um, congruent with regards to messaging your specialty programs to that particular practice or facility based on the disease programs that you're differentiating in the marketplace? Your quality outcome scores and your satisfaction scores, understanding the the needs of the practice or the facility and articulating those those quality measures back to that practice and how you can help them with readmission rates and reducing them and keeping patients in clients out of the hospital. Understanding if you're a you know, private duty company, uh, the message and communicating with potential partners and home health and non-competing home health and hospice companies, your message and how you can help them re you know, reduce readmission rates, help them increase um, customer and patient client satisfaction scores. And so it's really about understanding what that message is. And if for a home health and hospice company, really taking into account those quality scores that are publicly accounted for and addressing that in your sales message back to the potential referral sources. And are you growing as fast as you need to grow? I mean, it really starts with having a goal or a target in place. If there's not a target established and not everyone in your organization understands what that target or goal is, then are you able to ever really hit that target? The answer is no. And so it really starts with, if you want to grow, in your, in, is what is the growth target? What is it that you want to hit at the end of the month, end of the quarter, end of the year, and making sure that that's fully transparent across your entire organization? And once that's been established, then you can really – you can establish what your what your census goal should be, what your revenue goal should be, and then really drive the sales efforts and your KP, your data KPIs towards that. And so it really starts with understanding, you know, what your target and what your goal is. So when we look at the three ways to grow your business with technology, some of you that maybe I've talked to before, you've probably heard me say that the the fastest way to grow your business are through existing contacts and accounts. The fastest way to grow your business are through existing contacts and accounts. It's, it's much faster to grow your business with those accounts and contacts, referral sources that know you, trust you, and have been, do, been doing business with you. But that's the challenge of, of most agencies today is that they have, they have a number of accounts and contacts that are referring to them, but are you really maximizing the total opportunity that exists with each of those accounts? And what I mean by that is, as we all know, not all physicians and facilities and, and referral sources are giving you all of their business. They might be giving some of it to you, and we think that it's, it's the great majority. But I can tell you, having, having had access to uh, market data for a number of years and looking at current customers and the, number of, the, the amount of business that they're getting, a lot of times they're getting less than half, even if it's an A account, they're getting less than half of the total potential from these accounts. And so without having that technology and the visibility into the market of really understanding what you're leaving on the table, it's almost impossible to really maximize the growth from these accounts um, without having some technology or vis visibility. And so it really starts with making sure that you have the right targets and the targets are in, some, in, in a technology application where you can then be able to identify these high referring facilities and accounts, the total volume that you should be getting or you could be getting from them and then comparing that and contrasting that with the, the the actual number of referrals that you're getting from those accounts and then looking what the opportunity gaps are 
And so that really provides you with that total visibility. And so the technology that exists today can allow you to, number one, identify total market opportunity with an account, as well as what you're currently getting from that account, and then putting a plan together to, to maximize total, total volume from those, those key accounts. Um, the optimizing each engagement. And so this goes with Without saying that we all know that the market is is very competitive, and so you're you're not the only agency that's calling on Dr. Smith or Case Manager Susan that day. I mean, more than likely they're probably seeing or have experienced 10, 15, 20 other reps calling on them that day. And so, what is going to make your rep or you stand out from the competition? And so, engaging and optimizing that that relationship and that experience each and every time is going to help you differentiate from your competitors. And what I mean by that is most sales rep, reps today, and of course, probably not yours, but most sales rep today, when they do a sales call are stopping at what we do and what we call as a drive by or, or a hello call. And so it provides absolutely no value to that particular referral source. And so by having technology and having transparency and information at your fingertips to be able to revisit previous calls, be able to give status of patient or client updates um, from technology, what allows you to have more engagement and really optimize that engagement each and every time. And so, you know, if we talk to a physician or referral source, and we ask them, what's important to you when dealing with a home care company or hospice or home health? And with your sales reps, and it's really about, we want feedback. We want to understand what's happening with the referrals that we've provided. We want updates. And we want that level of meaningful data provided to us, you know, each and every time the reps are coming to see us, as opposed to, you know, what can you do for me today, you know, Dr. Smith. So the technology allows you to optimize each of those engagements. And then thirdly, managing growth with real-time results. So really understanding where your referrals are coming from. Know when referral patterns are decreasing, when they're increasing um, for certain accounts. And identify reps that are underperforming, you know, and or overperforming real time. And so, you know, one of the, the biggest challenges with, with agencies today is really understanding where those referrals are coming from, which accounts and who in those accounts, those referring people, are actually re making the referrals and whether those patterns are, are up or down. And so without having the use of technology or data real-time reports, it's very difficult to manage and, and understand patterns that are affecting your business negatively. So if you have 10A accounts in a certain geographic market, and those 10A accounts on average refer, let's say five referrals per month, without having kind of real-time data and understanding from your from your EHR or from your, your, your patient care system, understanding what those results you know, are happening week to week, then it's very difficult to coach and provide feedback to your reps and or engage with those accounts and contacts and what's happening with the referrals for that particular month. So it's very difficult to manage the growth uh, without having the use of the, of the real-time results through your technology platform. So <clears throat> that's kind of a high level of, of what we're going to be talking about today. So now I want to get into the idea of kind of gaining total visibility um, within your market. So if we can just move forward there. So focusing on those high value referral sources that I, that I talked and opened, up, opened the presentation with. So it's key that we're focusing on those high value referral sources. And without really the use of, of technology and, and market intelligence data embedded into the product or into your overall day-to-day -day, um, activities, it's very difficult to identify those high value referral sources. And what we find is that when, when reps are calling on and making their sales calls, they're making calls that are comfortable for them. And what I mean by that is the calls that they're making are potentially um, friendly calls of accounts they've been going to for months and months and months, maybe getting the odd referral here, uh, admission there, but not really a, a high value target. And so the idea is to identify those high value targets right up front and be able to optimize each of those territories for the reps so that the calls that they are making, although it may not be comfortable calls, they're certainly making the right calls to the right potential partners. Um, and, and as we have up here, you know, not all referral sources are created equal. And so by utilizing the market data and historical referral volumes coming in from, from an EHR patient care system into your platform allows you to identify, you know, those viable uh, opportunities for your organization. So, um, 
I think the ability here to to really focus in and develop a market or a sales territory on the right high value targets is going to ultimately drive the growth for your agency much faster because you know that each and every call that's being made is being made to a high value target I mean, without being said. Um, but you know, optimizing every sales territory to include only the accounts that have potential to refer to your organization is of the utmost importance. Um, and I think that by doing that, it's going to help you to exceed your overall goals much faster. What characteristics of a good referral source um, are we talking about? And so there's there's four four bullet points up here that I want to talk about that really make up what we consider you know the ideal referral source for for you and for most most agencies. And so I talked about you know the volume of patients and the overall um, volume by and by diagnosis. And so with market intelligence data today, you can identify high volume uh, practices. So physicians that are seeing lots and lots of patients that would be ideal for home care, home health, or hospice um, may have high referral activity into each of those. And we can identify the ones that are that have that have high referral volumes. Um, and we can also identify targets that have low activity, meaning that they have large practices, but they are not necessarily referring a large number of referrals into home care, hospice, or home health. And so the opportunities there really are from an education perspective, educating those referral sources on how it could benefit the client or the patient on you know, getting into home care, some of the additional services that we could provide in the home, um, home health, being able to keep them out of the hospital, and ultimately, uh, you know, for those of you who are in hospice, educating those physicians sooner regarding the benefits of, of hospice and getting on sooner. So that data is available today, and that allows you to very uh, quickly identify opportunities that would fall into high volume of patient, but potentially maybe not referring a large volume that you could uh, develop a relationship with. The, the second idea here, the second notion is really the number of current agency partners. So the data today allows us to really look at the number of, of um, agencies that a physician is currently utilizing for referrals. And so what this can tell us is that we can see that if a physician or a facility is using a high number of potential agencies uh, for those referrals, that, that could tell us that there's a really strong opportunity for us to differentiate our services to that particular referral, referral source because um, there isn't really a lot of differentiation happening if the physician's using 25, 30, 50 agencies currently. Um, conversely, if the physician is utilizing just a few or one agency, that tells us that there's probably a very strong relationship, could be a medical director, but the opportunity there would be to be a number two, to be a number two resource or, or backup for that particular physician or facility. Um, I think a lot of agencies look at a relationship where there's only one or two providers uh, associated to that practice where they back off and decide, well, there's probably not a big opportunity for us with this particular physician or facility. But in those cases, there, there could be. I mean, there could be a large opportunity if you had the right message or market, uh, marketing the right services to that physician or facility regarding your, your specialty programs, some, some key differentiators that you have over your, your competition, like uh, you know, clinical uh, outcome scores, satisfaction scores, and so on, you could certainly develop a nice business being number two. Uh, the third point is the payer mix. And so I see this time and time again where sales reps are calling on uh, large physician practices that potentially have you know, large commercial um, mix or have a large Medicaid mix. And so if that's not consistent with the type of business that you're going after, you know, it's certainly important to make sure that the, the sales territory and accounts are optimized based on the type of uh, reimbursement that you're seeking. So uh, that data is available today, and that certainly uh, strongly um, encourage you to, to uh, take a look at this kind of data when you're developing your, your sales methodology in each of your markets to make sure that the reps are calling on the right targets with the right payer mix. The, the specialty programs, uh, the physician specialties, this is another uh, key, key driver to growth, which is uh, aligning your specialty programs and the way that you differentiate your organization uh, from your competitors based on, on specialty. So if you happen to have developed a, a diabetes program or a CHF program, ortho, 
uh, dementia, whatever it may be, is understanding those key targets in each of your markets that are driving patient volume into those, those specialty programs and articulating your, your differentiating message to them. And, you know, we don't see enough of that happening in the markets. And I think that if you're able to identify the key targets that have um, like a physician practice that has a key specialty on orthopedic programs or CHF, and you're able to drive your message to that, then I think you've got a big opportunity to differentiate from, you know, from the competition in each of those particular markets. The... Um, <clears throat> The other, the other thing that I'll say here with regards to a good referral source, so I know that we've got a lot of, a lot of private duty or home care uh, agencies on this call today, and certainly the data that's available today allows you as a, as a private duty or home care provider to identify non-competing home health and hospice companies that have large market share and um, identify areas that you could partner with them. And for example, helping them with additional personal care in the home, as well as you know, keeping the patients out of the hospital through medication management, all the services that you provide, there's a big opportunity to take some of this market intelligence data and really understand how you can partner better with, with the home health and hospice providers you know, in the market that are not competing to you. Um, you know, as we know, home health and hospice providers are, are certainly tasked with providing and delivering high quality service. All this is being reported on Medicare. Um, dot gov and and certainly keeping patients out of the hospital. We also know that the services that private duty companies provide uh, can certainly complement and provide great synergy with home health and hospice. So I would encourage if you're a private duty company, consider some of the market intelligence data that's out there and really kind of base your market strategy on delivering the right message to some of these these referral sources that could potentially be home health and hospice companies and how you can help partner with them and help deliver a better um, partnered service. So those are those are some of the characteristics of what would make up a really good referral source and uh, certainly a lot more to that, but I think that gives you a pretty good idea of some areas that you could focus on to to, uh, to grow some referrals. Here's a here's a screenshot or an example of some of the market intelligence data that I was that I was highlighting earlier that is available um, to you today in the market and, and through Playmaker. And so what we're looking at here essentially is, is, a, is a home health uh, physician or a physician that refers to home health. And so the question from some of you that are in private duty say, well, you know, if it's a home health referral, it doesn't really apply to us, but it does. I mean, because there's really a one-to-one -one relationship. Because if you think of a physician that has and is referring to home health, they obviously have a high Medicare uh, patient population. They understand the needs of home health or at least home care in the home. And so... From this particular data set, you can identify the physicians that ha have high referring volumes into home health. And so if you look on this screen here, you can see essentially tens across the top. And what that means is you've got, um, for this particular doctor, you've got a, a very large practice of Medicare recipients. You've got a very large volume of referrals going to uh, a particular um, or to home health and or hospice in, in another case. And you can see further over to the right, the, the cancer, CHF, COPD, uh, endocrinology, orthopedic, and urinary kidney, you can see that this particular physician has a very high volume of physician, or high volume of referrals going into each of these disease buckets or these disease categories. So for example, if you're um, an organization that really specializes in CHF, and that is your your differentiating uh, program, this will be an opportunity for you to go talk, talk to Dr. Um, Charles and sell your CHF program because you know he's got, a, he's got a large practice, he's got a high degree of referrals going into to home health, and he is specialized in the area of CHF. And so this allows you to, my earlier point, is target into a particular um, set of targets and optimize the territory very quickly. And so that you know that your reps or and or you are calling on the right the right referral sources, and you're built you're building essentially a repeatable process through that. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and, and dive into um, section number two, optimizing every engagement. So. Another way to really develop a repeatable, consistent process and very strong relationships is to make sure that you and or your sales reps or 
community liaisons are planning every call in advance. That every call is planned in advance. See, way too many uh, sales professionals that are just going from, from call to call, asking referral sources what they have for me today or what they have for them today, and not really providing any meaningful data or feedback to, to our key accounts. And so there's something what I call the law of six. And the law of six simply states that there are six objections that you are going to commonly hear from referral sources in each of your markets, regardless of whether you're it's private duty, home care, home health, hospice, anywhere along the post-acute, you're going to hear essentially six objections. And you're going to hear these consistently. And the idea here is to make sure that your sales reps are um, understanding what those objections are and developing a call plan and putting these into the each and every plan that they're that they're doing um, with each and every referral source every day. And so by having and using the, utilizing technology, you're able to keep track of, of these notes, keep track of any historical data on these accounts, so that as a sales rep, when I go into an account, I can see all this information at my fingertips and I can provide more, more meaningful and timely feedback to um, particular accounts that I'm calling on. The other, the other benefit here is that I'm able to provide you know, timely feedback on clients and patients and how they're doing and the status of the patient, were they admitted and um, how, are they, how are they doing on service. And, and that's kind of the feedback that you know, we received from physicians when surveying them a number of years ago is we asked them, you know, what, are the, what, are the top, what are the top things that you're looking for from an agency when you're selecting them as, as a partner? You know, and it was interesting that we heard that number one was quality. They wanted to make sure that the quality of service with, without being said was being provided. But number two being responsiveness, you know, how specialized they were the, and the updates of the patient. Um, those were, those are really the top four or five things. And I think if you think about building that relationship and making sure that each and every call is relevant, those are the items that need to be addressed and need to be discussed on, on the call. So quality, responsiveness, specialization of your services and the progress of the patient. And I think without the use of technology and or a sales platform, it's really difficult to be able to communicate these key benefits um, and, and repeat that process each and every time. And so um, just being prepared and utilizing the technology to leverage the information across 50, 50 or so accounts um, can certainly be, be leveraged off use of technology. It's almost impossible in today's marketplace to have 50 accounts and keep track of this type of information and being able to articulate this on each and every call. So um, I think the patient updates are key. The um, also talking about you know how you onboard patients uh, is key. I mean, I think certainly being able to talk about the, the status of a patient you know, on the calls are certainly going to help differentiate as well. So, next, next slide, please. So, bring data, not donuts. Um, still see uh, too many reps bringing in, uh, you know, giveaways and donuts and chotskis, trying to build those relationships. And I think the relationships are really built on trying to improve and articulate the quality that you're delivering to, to that, that particular partner, that physician or facility. And so really understanding what, what the key metrics are um, for a particular facility is very important. So understanding what your, what your um, customer, customer satisfaction scores, what your quality outcome scores are, you know, all that type of data that's readily available through market intelligence data and, you know, through some of the Medicare.gov sites or, or um, pages, knowing that particular data can help you deliver a much stronger message back to a potential target. Um, we all know that the, the readmission scores um, are really important when we're trying to differentiate ourselves from the competition. And I think being able to look and identify some of your some of your competition that have high readmission scores versus your agency gives you an opportunity to be able to sell that uh, very effectively to a potential physician or, or a facility and and ask for some additional business that you maybe you're not you're not getting from that your competition is getting. So I think the idea here is really identifying some of those those quality measures that exist today and articulating those through your your sales approach. Um, HCAP scores. We know that HCAP scores 
otherwise known as you know quality scores and customer satisfaction scores are also being published. So really understanding you know how your scores uh, compare to your competition, and then providing that information back to potential targets and letting them know how you're doing relative to your competition can certainly help differentiate um, your agency. Section three, um, manage growth with results. So it's almost, it's almost impossible to successfully manage a sales team or a business development team without really knowing what your numbers are and, and or having really a target to hit as we talked about earlier. So understanding things like the, the number of calls per week that your reps are, are achieving, the number of referrals that they're gaining, the number of admissions that are being converted, the number of counts and contacts they have, um, without having that information, in a technology platform makes it almost impossible to achieve goals, um, or at least achieve the, the lofty goals that you guys are, are setting. And so by putting this information into a technology platform, you can then manage uh, to those expectations and understand essentially near real time, you know, how your reps are doing to each and every one of these KPIs. So we talked about early on setting those goals, but now it's about seeing the results and seeing how reps are me measuring up to those particular, um, you know, KPIs that you've established. And so the idea here would be then if we, if we know the data in the marketplace through our market intelligence data and we can identify high value targets and assign those to each territory, now we have to be able to, to manage those targets and the activities around those targets to be able to make sure that we're achieving those goals. So I would ask all of you rhetorically, you know, do, and do you know how many calls your reps are making per day? Do you know how many referrals they're, they're getting from each of those referrals per day? What the conversion rates are on those accounts? And ultimately, are they achieving the goals that they need to be achieving each and every week, month, or quarter? And so this is the, the benefit of essentially technology today is in, through a sales technology is to allow you to be able to identify those goals and, and making sure that they are measuring up to those KPIs essentially, uh, you know, weekly, monthly, and quarterly, and then obviously your, to your annual goal. Um, so who are we maximizing each and, each and every referral source? And so, you know, we talked about that a little bit earlier as far as if we've established our true potential for a target or a referral source that they could refer, you know, for example, 10 admissions or 10 referrals per month, and we're only getting five, are we essentially capturing all that we can be capturing from that from that target? The answer is no. So how do we do that? Well, the answer is really understanding through through the technology and through the data that the rep is making the right amount of calls per week to this particular target. The the right conversations are happening with these targets, and ultimately the the volume is coming out. And so if if this information is not available, it's almost impossible to be able to coach off that. So I think the point here is that by having this data available, then you're able to, to manage and coach uh, accordingly and ultimately drive the, the communication to achieve these goals um, to your sales team. This, this next example here is um, an example of a sales report that would be available and it's certainly available in Playmaker. It is kind of like a, a an advanced day summary report to be able to look at such a real time how your reps are performing. And so what we're looking at here on the left hand side, starting with Adam Bronson would be one of your, your sales reps, for example. And then Amir Khan and Brittany and Jerry and Scott. So that would make up your sales team. And then we can see across from, from to the right the number of calls that they have scheduled for the week, the number of calls that have been completed, the, the number of notes that were captured on each call, the total number of accounts that are assigned to that particular sales rep, the, the number of events that have been completed to that, to that account over 30 days and the 90 days, and then further to the right, kind of the activity that's happened here or the results. So the referrals that have been provided uh, last week, the admission conversion, and then uh, kind of week to date, month to date, and the number of admits last month, year to date, and uh, prior year. So the, 
the point of having access to this data within your technology platform is to be able to very quickly identify coaching opportunities across your sales team now that you've built and optimized your sales territory, are your reps making the adequate number of calls? Are they, um, do they have the right communication for each of these targets that are in their book of business? And what have the results been? Are they, are they bringing in the, the number of referrals and admissions that you need in order to hit that, that target or that goal? And so without this and without the ability to have you know, data consolidate into a into a technology platform it's really difficult to make to, to drive the behavior of your sales team towards achieving those goals so you know the idea here really is just is constantly measuring constantly measuring the results of your team and and having access to this you know real time the you just move to the next can we move to the next slide, please? Yeah. <clears throat> you see it, Adam? It's up. Next. There you go. Next one. Yeah. Next one. one. Yeah. Next one. Thanks. Okay. I thought I was getting pretty good at it. There we go. You, can you yeah, see the info? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So, like, to, to wrap this up and, and to provide a, a quick summary here, number one, to, so to use data to identify and target the right the right pattern. So, the idea is that whether it's you making the sales calls or your sales reps that they're calling on the right high value referral sources. And so it really starts with with understanding the market data that exists and understanding the right targets that should be aligned with your overall strategy as an organization, those specialty programs, and then and then tying all that back into developing a book of business for each one of your sales reps. And that that helps you kind of get on the right track and making sure that your sales reps are calling on the right referral sources, you know, each and every day. So ultimately you've got the the chance or the opportunity to hit your goal. Number two, you know, um, elevate your conversations from from high to meaningful discussions. So as we talked about, making sure that each and every conversation that you're having with a referral source is meaningful. That we're providing status on clients and patients. We're talking about um, outcomes and client satisfactions. We're making sure that we're talking about you know new programs, but that those conversations are, are value add back to the physician, the referral source, the facility, and not just drive-by calls. And so being able to capture historical information in your, in your technology platform allows you to, to be able to have more meaningful discussions as opposed to trying to pick up and find sticky notes and pieces of paper that we're all familiar with, with that our reps do and have it all in one place. And so that you know that those conversations are happening each and every time and providing you know high value back to those referral sources. And then thirdly is knowing the results of, of the actions and being able to manage your reps um, based on those targets and, and uh, KPIs that you've set. So the idea here is that once again, if, you're, if your goal is to have a patient census of X or revenue of Y by the end of the year and that you've established and built a territory or book of business for each of your sales reps to drive and achieve that, they'd be able to manage and make sure that those activities are consistent with those targets and with those goals. And um, so that's where the argument becomes that the technology platform and having your data, your sales data aggregated into one place to be able to have the benefit of the market intelligence data, the uh, EHR data, your patient care system coming into the system, as well as historical notes that you can access, all three of these coming together to provide um, a very strong message and information that you can assimilate and, and message back to the marketplace to ultimately differentiate and achieve your goals. So, um, so with that, I will... Uh, leave it for questions. So we've got about, I guess, 15 minutes or so for questions and uh, be happy to answer those. Yeah, let me see if we've got any questions here. Uh, so we do have you guys on uh, mute. And so if you have questions, um, please go ahead and type those into the uh, question area. Um, we have one uh, question here or comment. Adam, it says, it sounds like your application is mostly geared towards home health and not private duty. Can you touch on what type of data you can provide to private duty agencies? Yep, that's a great question. So, although, I mean, we did, 
we do have private duty companies that use our product. Um, the data that, I think there's probably two pieces to this, to this question. The market intelligence data that I've been referring to is essentially Medicare claims data. So although, yes, it's probably geared towards a home health agency because of the Medicare uh, customers, when you think of private duty, as all of you know, you probably have a lot of, most of your clients are, are Medicare. And so the data is a very good proxy to identify you know, physicians in each of your markets and facilities as well, hospitals, um, skilled nursing facilities, long-term care, and so on, the referral volumes that are coming out that are Medicare referral volumes based on specialty, based on disease state. And so it really gives you a clear direction on total total volume of referrals from physicians and facilities that your, your reps or you could be calling on. Um, in addition to that, the data also provides market share for home health and hospice companies, and it also provides the the physicians and referrals that the sorry it provides the physicians and facilities that are referring to those home home health and hospice companies. So if you're a private duty company, this gives you kind of the full landscape of what physicians you should be calling on. Okay, if you've partnered with one of these home health or hospice companies, and or identify home health and hospice companies that you should be partnering with because they have you know large market share. Um, Conversely, you can identify home health and hospice companies that have really high admission rates. And so how would that be helpful for you? And how that would be helpful is if you if you have uh, ABC Home Health Company that has really high admission rates, but they've got large market share and large presence in the market, the message from, from you to the, the non-competing home health company could be, look, we can we can partner with you and, and be your eyes and ears in the in the home for Mrs. Smith, and we can help you, re, you know, reduce those readmission scores or rehospitalization scores, as well as help improve your customer satisfaction score. So I think the data is very relevant for uh, for a home care agency on two fronts there. Good, very good, Adam. So I have I have a question that's uh, kind of similar. Um, so can maybe you talk a little bit about from your um, experience what types of, um, you know, outcomes or data that a private duty agency needs to um, look at? What, what would be a good data mark besides maybe just um, patient satisfaction that a private duty agency would want to be able to uh, capture and talk about in their sales process? I think that's a great question. So I think, you know, there's a lot of third parties out there. I'm not going to certainly get into, into any of them, but there's third parties out there that you could um, partner with that could do some satisfaction scores, uh, either kind of post-service or um, you know during service, and you could essentially put together your own your own scores or sort of your own uh, template of what you want to measure as an agency. And the benefit here is that you can take those scores, you know, hopefully positive, and take those back to the marketplace and demonstrate to referral sources that you've been proactive, and that would really help differentiate you over the competition that aren't really providing that transparency to, you know, to this data set. So um, I know there's third parties out there that are doing that for home care companies. And I think it would, I would certainly encourage you to, to seek them out and, and, and put together or work with them to, uh, to come up with your own surveys. Very good. That you can probably report my, off of. Probably my favorite uh, thing on your PowerPoint was to bring data, not donuts. So yeah. how we can bring data is, is important. It, it, it absolutely is right. I mean, I think certainly, um, you know, what how we train reps is that you know bring the donuts once they become a referral source, uh, <laughs> you know, not not before. And I think once they're once they're a referral source and they're providing, you know, volumes of referrals to you, I think that's certainly one way to um, if you want to do that. But you you can take donuts and do lunches, you know, every day, right? And I think that they're that those aren't the reasons why you're going to develop a strong relationship with a referring partner. It's going to be around data and, you know, backing that up with your service delivery. Very good. So do we have any other uh, questions for Adam? I don't see any more posted, any other comments or, or uh, uh, okay, I don't see too much more. So Adam, can you talk a little bit about how people can find you or learn more about your, um, the Playmaker product? I, 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 as a salesperson, I particularly like, I think discipline is really important in the sales process. And so that's one of the things I think is really good about your product that I've seen uh, demonstrated yep. to me. So can, we, can you talk a little bit about how you can be reached? Absolutely. 
probably the best way and easiest way for everyone to reach us is Playmaker, www.playmakercrm.com. And on there, you can uh, read a lot more about our platform and what makes us um, purpose-built for the home care, home health, and hospice space, from quite frankly, the full post-acute continuum. And on there, you can you can request the demo and probably the quickest way and easiest way for everyone to remember. So playmakercrm.com. And from there, you'll be able to very easily navigate and, and find additional information and resources as well as, you know, uh, request a demo or a call with one of our one of our sales professionals. Well, thank you very much, uh, Adam, for your time and your expertise. I know it uh, was very great information. And um, I'm going to close out the session today. Uh, I'm going to put a just a slide up here about uh, Core Cube's capabilities, just to remind everybody uh, about the marketing and sales type services we provide here at Core Cubed. And uh, also here's a slide on some information on how you can reach us um, as well. So this uh, PowerPoint will be posted in terms of uh, so you can people can um, play it back and re-listen to it. And uh, Adam, if there's nothing else, I I just want to thank you very much for your your presentation today. Yep. Thank you, Shelly. And thank everybody for, for coming today. Really appreciate it. Hope you got a couple of nuggets out of it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Bye-bye.